If you have your Bibles this morning, turn to um, Luke chapter 18. I want to talk to you just for a few moments uh, today about what I call bulldog faith. It's really interesting that months ago I had all of the sermons for the fall already written and prepared. I think it's ironic that on, that on this Sunday we continue to look at the parables of Jesus. We have been all year long looking at the parables of Jesus, discovering who God is through the stories that Jesus told. And today we're going to look at Luke chapter 18 and we're going to talk about bulldog faith. Bulldog faith is hanging on when others let go and give up. Chances are uh, today in this sanctuary there's many of you that understand bulldog faith. And we're going to go to Luke chapter 18 and verse 1. If you're with me, let me hear an amen. amen. Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said in a certain town there was a judge who, was neither, who neither feared God or cared about men. There was a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, grant me justice against my enemy. For some time he resisted. But finally, he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or care about people, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually wear me out with her coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? Who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you that he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Bulldog faith hangs on when other people let go. I love this parable that Jesus tells. The life lesson of this parable is that Jesus was teaching his disciples and now he's teaching us two lessons. The first lesson is that we should, we should pray and the second lesson is that we should not give up. Bulldog faith is that faith that says I'm not going to quit. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give in. Now, bulldogs are, 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 are famous for having a short nose because they can hang on and they don't let go. Pit bulls would be a little bit more appropriate, but I just didn't like the sound of pit bull faith, so I chose bulldog faith. <laughs> and it has nothing to do with the bulldogs beating the gators yesterday. This has got nothing to do with And I must remind you that Florida State lost too, so we're all mourning together, aren't we? UCF won? Bulldog faith. They got a short nose so they can hang on and not let go. Now, I want to ask you a question today. What is it? that God wants you to follow in the legacy of this widow woman and continue to pray and not give up. I'm reminded maybe of so many times in our lives when we are praying, we're asking God, we're pleading for help, and we just give up just a little too soon. We're not persistent. We're not bulldog. We get tired, don't we? 
We get frustrated when things don't happen exactly the way we think they need to happen, and we, we give up. In this story, Luke chapter 18, there was a a widow woman, and she was fighting against injustice. How many know that there's a lot of injustice in this world today? And it really doesn't say what the issue was, but it says that she was fighting for against injustice. She had an enemy. She had an adversary, and she was going to the judge, and she was knocking on his door, and she wasn't going to let go until she got an answer. I looked up the definition of injustice. Injustice is a a violation of the rights of others. It's unjust or unfamiliar or unfair treatment. And this widow woman was fighting for justice, and she kept knocking on the door. She kept sending emails. She kept texting. She went on social media. She was not going to get no for an answer, and she persisted. And finally, the judge said, this woman is going to drive me crazy. Now, I'm not going there right, right now on this service. But she had bulldog tenacity to the said, I am not going to let you sleep. I am not going to let you ignore me. I am not going to allow you to let this slide by. I'm going to come every single day, and I'm going to knock on your door until you give me justice. That is the moral of this story. We, all of us, need to be like that widow woman, and we need to develop bulldog faith and not give up. Grandma, you can't give up praying. Grandpa, you can't give up praying. Mom and dad, you cannot give up praying. You and I, we need to develop that bulldog faith that says, God, we are going to continue to knock, we are going to pray, and we are not going to give up. Can I get an amen? So when you have bulldog faith, I'm going to give you seven principles real quick. We're only going to be a few minutes, but I want you to write these down. You've got notes, follow along, fill in the blanks, and let's, let's discover how we can be and have bulldog faith in this world. Number one, when you have bulldog faith, you are driven by internal passion. Something drives you. Something motivates you. Something gets under your skin and you have that internal passion that says, I am going to speak up. I am going to speak out. I am not going to be silent. I'm not going to give up because I've got an internal passion that says to me, I am going to keep knocking until I get an answer. Now, what I like about this was this widow woman. How many know that widows know how to fight? People in poverty know how to fight. Underdogs know how to fight. And they've got an internal passion that drives them to wake up and keep knocking on that door. It doesn't come from external. It comes from inside. God places something in your heart and my heart that says, I am not going to give up. I'm going to keep on praying until I get an answer. And it comes from inside of who you are. It's an internal passion given by God. Number two, I love this one. When you have bulldog faith, you're not only driven by internal passion, but number two, you realize that no is not an answer. You don't quit. You are going to get an answer, and you are going to continue until the judge gives you the answer that you're looking for. That's bulldog faith. They realize that no is not an answer. Can I get an amen? Amen. Number three, I love this one. When you have bulldog faith, you push. Everyone say push. push. You push beyond common sense into the realm, into the realm of faith. You push beyond common sense. You see, it would have been common sense for this woman just to give up and just accept it, and just move on with life. 
But how many know that when you have bulldog faith and you're like that widow woman, you push beyond common sense into the realm of faith? You know what God wants us to do today? He wants us to push. Push beyond common sense. Push beyond what the, what the critics say. Push beyond what most people would, would, would want us to stop at and cross over that line and say, I am going to push and I'm going to move in from common sense into the realm of faith. And I'm going to keep knocking and believe in God to answer my prayer. Can I get an amen? I write this down. Write this down. Push. P-U-S-H. Persist until something happens. What's God calling us to do? He's calling us to push. Persist until something happens. Listen to what Calvin Coolidge says. I love this. Nothing in this world can take the place of persistence. Talent will not. Nothing is more common than unsuccessful men with talent. Genius will not. Unrewarded genius is almost a proverb. Education will not. The world is full of educated derelicts. Persistence and determination are above the omnipotent. Calvin Coolidge said, church, it's time to push. It's time to persevere. It's time to be determined. And let's be like that widow woman who are going to continue to persist until something happens. Number three, if you're still with me, say amen. Actually, you're not with me because it's number four. Number four. Just checking. Bulldog faith people at some point will drive you crazy. Now would be a good time to start making people crazy. You know, you know we spend a lot of time trying to please people. We spend a lot of time trying to make people happy. Spend a lot of time trying to make people content. We indulge. We pamper. We cater to. We coddle. We satisfy. We gratify. We pander. We oblige. But this widow woman was so driven in her faith that she said, I'm going to make everybody crazy until I get my prayer answered. It's time for us to be a little bit more insane. It's time for us to be a little bit, a little bit mad, a little, a little nuts, a little wacky, a little berserk, a little cuckoo, a little batty, a little bonkers. We need to stop trying to make people happy, and we need, by our faith, to begin to make people crazy. That would been a good time to say amen. amen. Is your faith so strong today that you are willing to make other people crazy? Is your faith that contagious today that you are willing to make other people crazy in your pursuit to get an answer from God today? You know, what's amazing about what we're going through as a family. Some of you don't know, my, my son was in a traumatic accident, and we are currently up in Atlanta now at the Shepherd Center, day 47. Forty-seven long days. But what's so beautiful about what we're going through is, at some point, you just don't care anymore about what people think. And my phrase for the past couple of days has been, it just doesn't matter. Because the things that used to matter, they don't, they don't matter anymore. And, and, and we're living our whole life trying to please people and trying to fit in and trying to be, be politically correct. This widow woman, it just didn't matter what other people think. She was going to knock and she was going to wake up and every single day she woke up with one mission on her mind. I'm going to drive that judge crazy. Here's a thought for you this morning. How about you spend less time trying to please people and spend a little bit more time trying to drive people crazy with your faith? 
Oh, you're getting too little, a little too extreme, too extreme. Oh, you're pushing the envelope. You, you, you're, you're taking the Bible too literal. I love this widow woman. She said, I'm going to wake up today, and I'm going to knock, and tomorrow I'm going to knock, and the next day I'm going to knock. I'm going to persist until something happens. It's time for us to start driving people crazy with our faith because it just doesn't matter. How many are still with me? Point number five, very quickly. Bruce, you can go to the keyboard and get ready. I love this one. When you have bulldog faith, you are willing to stand alone. I want you to notice in Luke chapter 18, the Bible says there was a widow. Now, don't get me wrong. There are times when you need two or three people to, 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 to stand with you. There's comfort in knowing that, 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 that you as a church family are standing with us. When, when we get your cards, when we get your letters, when we see your texts, when we see you on social media fighting for Austin's army, it just does something. It just breathes life into our spirits, and we're so grateful. There will come a time in your life, like this persistent widow woman, there was no one waking up with her that morning. A widow. There'll be times in your life when your social media army is not going to be with you. If you're going to have bulldog faith, there's going to be times where you're going to have to stand alone. But you're never alone. There may be no one there knocking on the door with you, but you're never alone. And that widow woman, when she went to that door, she was by herself, but she was never by herself. I'm reminded of Stephen in the Bible, Acts chapter 7. Stephen was alone. The religious leaders had stones, and they tied him up in the middle of the city, and they began to throw rocks at Stephen because Stephen was willing to stand alone. And he stood for what he believed in. By the way, Stephen's name means badge of honor. There's honor when there's a time in your life where you can't count on your wife, you can't count on your husband, you can't count on your president, you can't count on your pastor, you can't count on your friends. You've got to just stand like Stephen and stand alone. But you're never, ever alone. There will always be someone with you. I'm reminded of David in 1 Samuel chapter 30. The Bible says that David and his men came home one weekend to find that the enemy had raided their entire home. They burned up the entire city and took the wives and the children, and they were all held captive. The Bible says that David and his men, they cried, listen to this, they cried until they had no more strength left. When was the last time you cried until you had no more strength? Things can't possibly get any worse. But the Bible says in 1 Samuel 30 that David's men, they turned on him. And they started to stone David. They started to criticize David. And there's David like Stephen. Alone. But never alone. The Bible says in 1 Samuel chapter 30, watch this, I love this, that when David was all by himself, his friends had stabbed him in the back. The Bible says that David found strength in the Lord his God. You see, when you're like that widow woman and you're the only one waking up, knocking on the door, when you're like Stephen, you're the only one that's standing up against injustice, when you're like David and everyone's turned against you, You can find strength 
in God alone. And you may by, be by yourself, but you will never, ever be alone. Number seven. I love this one. This is not going to be a Debbie Downer sermon. Here's the good news. When you have bulldog faith, you will be rewarded. The judge is going to get up. God is going to answer you. The Bible says that he'll do it quickly. You will be rewarded. All you have to do is keep showing up and knocking on that door. There is a reward. Can I get an amen? I love this one. Martin Luther King says, if you can't fly, then run. If you can't run, then walk. If you can't walk, then crawl. But whatever you do, you have to keep moving. And when you keep moving, the Bible says that you will be rewarded. Don't give up. Galatians chapter 6 says, don't grow weary in well-doing, you will reap a harvest if you faint not. It's been an interesting week for the George family. The doctors told us this week that we should prepare ourselves for a three to three year journey with Austin. The doctors handed me a catalog to begin to pick out medical wheelchairs and hospital beds. Been a real good time for me this week just to just to give up and say, you know what, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock this morning. I'm too tired to get up and knock on the door. It's been a good week for me to do that. But I want to be like the persistent woman in Luke chapter 18. I don't have all the answers. I don't have it all figured out yet. I don't know what's going to happen, but I do know, do know this. Today, I'm going to wake up and knock. And tomorrow morning, I'm going to wake up and knock. And on Tuesday, I'm going to get up and I'm going to knock again. And there's people here today. Although for, for us, this is a life-altering circumstance that we've been dealt with. Life's not fair. There's a lot of injustice, a lot of questions that I have, but I do know this. I'm going to keep knocking. I'm going to keep believing. I'm going to keep hanging on, and I'm not going to let go, and neither are you. And I really don't like talking about myself. I really don't like, but there's people here today that you're in, in worse shape than I'm in. You're faced with sickness. You're faced with disease. You're faced with a, a son or a daughter that's going through a situation. You're faced with financial difficulty. And today's message is all about not quitting, not giving in, not throwing in the towel, not accepting what experts say, but standing there and standing firm and say, God, I don't know about tomorrow, but I do know today I'm going to knock and I'm going to persist and I'm going to be determined in my faith and I trust you today. In just a moment, in the balcony, on the lower level, I'm going, to, I'm going to ask if you're here today. I'm full of faith. I'm tired as all get out. I'm exhausted. I'm fatigued. I, I'm, but I'm full of faith because our God is big, and he is able, and God is going to answer you. He's going to answer. We just got to wake up and keep knocking. You're one knock away from the judge realizing this woman is going to drive me crazy. I'm going to give her what she wants. That's a lesson. And that's available for all of us today. Would you stand to your feet across the auditorium as we get ready to, to dismiss?